developer building AI SaaS application either using OpenAI GPT APIs or you are not using any of the OpenAI APIs and still you want to use APIs then this video is going to tell you all the available options or at least the things that I want to recommend you from either the paid solution like hosted APIs and also some open source solution that can make your job as a developer much much easier. So we're going to cover like at least like five hosted API solutions at least five open projects open source projects that can help you in building your AI SaaS application with versatility and less dependability and zero zero open AI at all. So let's get started with the video. The first one like the way this order is going to go is like the kind of services that I trust. It's it's basically my personally opinionated list and none of the items that I mentioned in this video are sponsored on this video. This is completely like I'm, the only money I'm going to make is through AdSense. So you can completely trust that I'm not putting in uh, any sponsored money into this particular video at all. So the first solution is replicate.com. So replicate is a very popular solution and they were super popular during the stable diffusion time and they are continuously innovating and still developing solutions. So if you're going to build image generation, I think like it's no brainer to use replicate. Like there are a lot of um, popular indie hacker solo entrepreneurs like uh, Peter levels are using replicate and then also recommending replicate a lot. But again, if you want to use it for text, like this video is particularly focused on text, still replicate is a good solution. So you can go here and then see, okay, what is like Llama 270 million chart? You can just click this and then you can see a bunch of examples and also you can get to see the cost, um, what kind of uh, inference speed you get and uh, what how much time it takes and all the information. So replicate is definitely the first solution that I would strongly recommend, especially if you're looking at scale. Another important thing in this uh, list is that we are going to leave the obvious. I'm going to leave Microsoft Azure. I'm going to leave Google GCP. I'm going to leave AWS, AWS Bedrock or any other popular cloud solution like OVH, anything. So we have a separate section where I'm going to show you an open source project that you can use to deploy it on your own server, but I'm not going to mention any of the popular cloud solution. That is something to keep in mind. The next solution that I wanted to mention is uh, Hugging Faces Inference Endpoint. A lot of you would know Hugging Face being the open source company where you can host the model, where you can host the data set. But not a lot of people know that Hugging Face also has to make money. It's a for profit company. And for that, they actually let you deploy any single model that is available on Hugging Faces model. And in just a bunch of clicks, you can literally deploy your model. And um, yeah, they've got like different costs depending upon the machine that you pick and all the other items. So the service is called inference endpoint. You can just click this and then say deploy your first model. You have to be logged in. You have to add your credit card. But for any model that you pick, like if you, for example, there, this is E34 billion parameter model. If you go here, you can click this three dots and um, you can basically see like what are the options that you have to um, add the model. Like in this case, I don't see anything, but typically you can see like this is an inference example but typically you can actually see how to deploy the model and stuff. So you see the deploy button here. So inference API, inference endpoint. So inference endpoint is what we currently discussed about. So you can use Hugging Faces inference endpoint, which is definitely the second option in terms of my trustworthiness. But I've also heard from a lot of people that it is not one of the cheapest options. In fact, they are not the cheapest option at all. There are a lot of other cheaper options available for you but uh, it, it depends, like I'm just giving you a bunch of suggestions. So if you want the cheapest option, maybe this is not a good solution for you. But again, if you want to pick any model and then use it, like even the fine tuned models, even the models that you upload, then this is one of the best solutions for you. The next one is a very new offering. It's a together.ai. So it's a company that is offering you um, fine tuning and inference. So their inference is available. I've heard from uh, people I know at least uh, that um, you know they, they, their solution they're they're really like a closer to the developer community like when when you want to buy their solution you can go talk to them they help you and uh, they've got a bunch of models available especially they specialize in the llama um, family of model I think they picked up pace when llama came into picture so you can go there and then use it they have some numbers about like how they're faster and um, in fact, like a couple of solutions that we are going to discuss in this video, TGI, VLLM, they're also comparing with these solutions and then they're saying how they are faster. And they're also mentioning how they are cheaper than GPT 3.5 Turbo. And uh, one thing that you keep in mind, especially when you're building AI SaaS, you always need um, like fallback uh, solutions. 
open ai you are building open ai is not up and running you need some fallback a lot of people i consult um, i do a lot of consulting so a lot of people i consult i usually tell them have a tiered approach have one for open ai and uh, second tier you should have something else in fact like the way we do is like we have the first tier which is open source models cheaper models you don't have to necessarily hit gpt4 then you go into like gpt4 because you don't need gpt4 for everything and you can definitely use solutions like together for building that solution so, so together has a lot of offering and you can also check i think when you sign up you get like a free a uh, few credits you can check their model so i i, I initially got credit and um, i think they have changed the landing page quite a bit like last time i used this solution their landing page didn't look as sophisticated as this but yeah right now there are solution that you can use they claim to be fa fast cost efficient and also scalable scalable is a part that i wouldn't necessarily trust with them given that they are a new solution but um, but yeah so they've got a lot of funding they they might have uh, enough juice to support you the next one is uh, cohere before i start with cohere i wanted to say first that cohere may not have the best model in the entire list that we have seen so in the past like replicate um, hugging face together in all these three solutions you can basically kind of deploy any model that you want llama mistral and uh, any other model that you want cohere has their own model in itself it's not a hosting service it's just a question and answering or text completion endpoint so these are this is a completely different service altogether so now the thing with cohere is the good thing with cohere is you can test as much as you want anything during prototyping is completely free only when you productionize you have to pay them that's the thing but i don't i don't think their models are as capable or like drop in replacement for your gpt 3.5 in fact like i don't think their models are as good as uh, let's say mistral ai or zephyr or all these latest open source models but if you still want to use cohere um i think you're free to go use it try it but not the best model but you have the option of using free resources until you deploy it and then when you deploy it you can just you know have uh, the tiered approach that i mentioned so that is cohere the next one is again a very new service but the company kind of have uh, established themselves as a strong player in this ai llm space uh, especially in the rag space so this is coming from perplexity.ai Uh, they recently announced like as you can see like october 4th they announced that they are announcing pplx api so this is a new offering from them um rep to be honest like perplexity ai is one of the fastest inferencing i've ever seen on the internet you go ask any question it's the fastest like it's it has one of the fastest um, most tokens per second i've ever seen on the internet especially for a free service so perplexity.ai offers also an api at this point and you know the po their point is like you get access to like mistral llama code llama replit code kind of models and uh, yeah i can i can definitely say they 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 are quite fast like from what i've seen i've not used their api in itself they claiming to be 2.9x uh, lower latency than replicate and uh, 3.1x lower latency than any scale any scale is a solution that i've left out of this video my apologies but that is something that you can also try but again uh, perplexity ai has like multiple advantages pplx api is in public beta and uh, is free for users with perplexity pro subscription so if you have got perplexity pro subscription you can right away try they've got like some um, some comparison about how they are cheaper in cost and uh, how uh, they are also more uh, uh, like speed the faster i think their biggest advantage is speed but also you can go here and then check how good they are and uh, what you can do with perplexity.ai the next one i mean i would have put this at the start but the reason i put this at the last is anthropic anthropic is definitely one of the most capable models like somewhere on top um, with uh, gpt models and they've got like heck lot of funding uh, it's it's a team that came from open ai and all these things their api is not widely available like you have to be in the us i don't know you have to be on the waiting list it has a lot of these nuances that's why i put it on the last of this a uh, paid hosted offering solutions but otherwise i think it's it's a really good alternative um, but it's it's almost like going back to open ai this is um it's very similar like open ai or cohere it's it's their own model it is just hosted and offered as an in, in point you are not selecting the model that you want you just have to use the model that you that they provide you and then you anticipate that time and time again they will improve their model i think one of the biggest advantages and selling points of uh, co uh, the anthropic cloud models 
is the context window. They've got like more than 100K context window. That means you can do longer text generation. You can do more efficient drag and a lot of other these kind of advantages up there. But still the model is not available. Like it's a big bummer um, and not available across the world, waiting list and all these kind of messages there. But still, if you want to join the queue, you should definitely click request access and join the queue. So at this point of this video, we are almost like done with all the hosted solution. Like I said, like I missed any scale, um, definitely check out any scale as well. It's a, another decent offering. Like they've got like really good documentation. I've seen a lot of articles from their dev advocacy team, um, very thoughtful articles. So this is like the kind of solution. But if you saw across these solutions, you would have noticed one pattern. The pattern has been this. So there is a service, you go pay money and then you use their API and then you pay them X money for um, you know the API calls that you make, whether it is any model or whether it is like models like a Cohere or a Claude or um, you know as other services. The other part of this equation is where you have a server like like you rent a machine like 3090, you go to um, any hosting cloud cloud provider, RunPod or something, RunPod is quite popular these days. And you like rent a machine and uh, that machine is basically your server. And then you deploy something and then you run this as an API endpoint, like any model that you want. And the second part of this video is going to focus on this side of the story where you don't have to necessarily use any um, a API that is available, but rather if you want to have your own managed API, what are the tools that can help you support you and do that thing? The first thing that I think no brainer is text generation web UI from Uba Booga. So this is almost like the auto 1111 of stable diffusion world in the text generation. This is one of the oldest. This is one of the most popular text generation web UI that is available, but not a lot of people know that this web UI, which is like basically like UI also offers you a API server. So that means if you deploy text generation web UI from Uba Booga, you also get to expose the model as an API endpoint. That means you can basically do whatever we discussed in the first part of the video with this also. And it also has a bunch of other things like Xlama 2, which makes your inference faster, supports quantized models, has Xlama support, Xlama 2 support. So these things make the inference faster. And uh, you may you may not know until you build a SaaS application that the time an API response or the time it takes for your API to hit the server and get a response back is very critical. It can make your customers delightful. It can make your customers pissed. So speed is a very important um, term in this game. And uh, I don't know how many of you have read the book Flash Boys. Like if you're watching this video at this point, if you have read the book Flash Boys, please let me know in the comment section. It's about high frequency trading. Very interesting book from Michael Lewis. Anyways, speed is the name of the game. So speed is very important. So Uba Booga takes generation web UI can let you host any model. And uh, it also has got this um, additional support that I mentioned. And it gives you open AI compatible API server for chat and completions endpoints. This is a solution that you can host it on any GPU server that you want. Like you rent a 3090, you rent A100, you rent A1000, any, anything that you host, you can host this model and then start using it. The fact that it supports quantized models also can help you save the cost. So that's the first thing. The second thing is an interesting solution. It's called SkyPilot. So this solution can help you run LLMs on any cloud. Now it's an open source project. In fact, it's a project with Apache 2.0 license. So this, this by default is not hosting solution. This is an open source project that lets you take any model that you want and then run it on any cloud that you want. Like, and uh, it gives you a bunch of things. Like for example, it uh, abstracts all the important things. Um, so in one click, you can launch the job or clusters on any cloud. It lets you store the objects, let's say in uh, S3 or GCS or R2. And uh, it also helps you in maximizing the GPU availability uh, with provision across all the regions and it helps you save cloud cost. It has a lot of these um, advantages and I've seen a bunch of people recommending this on different forums. So these are the cloud providers. It supports AWS, Oracle, Google Cloud, Samsung has a cloud, I didn't know. Lambda Labs is another great solution, Lambda Cloud, Azure, IBM Cloud, Cloudflare, Kubernetes. So it basically, Kubernetes is not a cloud solution anyways. Yeah, it basically, are, do they have a cloud offering? I don't know. 
So it basically lets you take the large language model in a productionized setup and go deploy it in any places. Um, any of these cloud service and uh, see it says like sky pilot in one minute. They've got one of the best documentation I've seen like a lot of really good documentation. How do you run Mistral 7 billion? Um, you know, how do you do this thing? Um, how do you uh, run a queue and all these things? All these kind of examples are available for you to right away get started. This is an important open source project, like proper open source licensing. The next one is another project that for some reason I've not seen a lot of people using it except the open source project community. It's called Light LLM. So this project um, is called Light LLM. So what they do is uh, they give you one uh, library. It's called Light LLM, of course, as the name suggests. With this one, I think you get like a compatibility with around like 100 plus API or something like that they've got. So that means if you write your code that is wrapped on light LLM, today you can use OpenAI, tomorrow you can use Claude, day after tomorrow you can use Cohere, Azure, um, my AWS Bedrock or any other API endpoints. So with one structure, one API structure, it lets you use every other API. It's, I don't know how many of you have done classical machine learning. This is one of the reasons I always loved scikit-learn because you write scikit-learn, you have XGBoost, you want to change it to random for us, just single line, you change it. You have a logistic regression, change it. It's 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 a very structured API that can let you access all these models and also they're part of Y Combinator. Again, I don't know, like this is an open source project, how are they going to make money? Um, I don't know, YC, uh, I have no clue how, how, um, how are they going to make money. Maybe they're going to partner with cloud providers, but also, you know, you, this is another good page where you can see all the cloud providers. OpenAI, Azure, Together AI, and you know, you have got the Google Plum, any scale perplexity. So for all these things available for you to use. So this is like one endpoint, um, and uh, basically you can replace the OpenAI, um, not endpoint one like wrapper, uh, basically you can replace anything there, and uh, you have like OpenAI compatible model available from any of these solutions that are available. So definitely check out Light LLM. The next one is uh, text generation inference. This is a, this is a project that had a bit of controversy uh, back in the day. So currently this project, you can see it's from uh, offered by gradient.ai. Um, but this project was originally developed by um, Hugging Face. Somewhere along the timeline, Hugging Face decided to change the license of the project, got a lot of backlash and you can read the history here. So uh, Hugging Face uh, decided not to make it commercially available and um, then they forked this at that point and then they started developing this. So currently this also supports quantization, this supports C translate to, uh, it supports chat completion in open A format and it gives you like one click Docker. So it gives you all the opportunities and uh, TGI, it's like the short form is TGI. You would have seen TGI in a lot of different places. TGA is one of the popular, uh, most popular methods to deploy machine learning, de deploy large language models, not mis machine learning models. So if you want to use some tried and tested solution, something that a lot of people are already using, definitely check out TGI. This is not from Hugging Face, this is from Gradient AI. The next one is uh, probably the one that I would recommend the most and I've seen um, the fastest. I know, I know for sure, like, you know, perplexity claimed, or I think together AI claimed to be faster than VLLM. I'm, I've not seen it, but VLLM is one thing that I've personally seen being ridiculously faster. This is actually fast. This is the definition of fast in terms of LLM inference. And uh, this is an amazing project, Apache 2.0 license. They have, uh, they have their own methodology about uh, how they change the paging and all the other things to make LLM inferencing faster and they have got a bunch of solutions like easily available for you to use. If you want to use, um, if you have your custom server, custom GPU, and you want to use large language models and you want the inference to be the fastest, I think it's no brainer to try out with VLLM, one of the fastest I've personally seen. And it's also like open source project commercially available for you to use. And they also support a lot of different hugging face models. That means you get the flexibility. You're not like tied up with a closed solution like a Claude or here. You can basically use any existing model and not necessarily any. There's a bunch of models that they support, but out of all these models, uh, you can pick anything and then use it with VLLM. That'll be like one of the fastest inference solutions that you have ever got. The next one is uh, 
Da, that's it. Oh, that's it. The next one is MLC. Okay. MLC is the solution. I have not a lot of clue about how do you deploy it, but this is the solution that I've seen time and time again. And unfortunately, I wanted to make a separate video about it. MLC also lets you run these large language models on your smartphones, um, other devices like handheld devices. So MLC is one of the fastest again, like uh, it's a quantized bit, but you would still see it is one of the fastest. Like I've seen some of the benchmarks where MLC is faster than VLLM, but I don't think like there is any easy way or something that at least like I'm aware of um, that can help you deploy L um, MLC easily. But if you figure out a way to deploy MLC, I think um, I think you've got like a really one of the fastest um, LLM deployment, LLM inferencing engine or solution for you to deploy. So that's why I kept it at the last, like even though this is the fastest, I've kept it at the last, um, just just so that you know, you know that this is a good solution, but I don't know. Finally, before, before I close out this video, I want to turn your attention towards this amazing blog post by Hamel. Hamel is uh, quite involved in the ML ops community, um, previously with fast AI and a lot of other things, strongly contributing to open source solutions and also uh, publicly sharing uh, the work. So this blog post is a really good one if you're optimizing for latency. It doesn't necessarily talk about hosting solution, but if, if you have an LLM, if you have got your own server, what do you deploy? How do you deploy? I, it, it has got a lot of uh, nuggets for you. It has got a lot of details. It has got a lot of nuances that, you know, somebody has tried and tested by deploying. Definitely read it. I'll link it in the YouTube description. All these links will be available in the YouTube description for you to try it out. So to quickly summarize the first half of the video, we learned about different hosted model solution. The second half of the video, we learned about open source projects that can help you if you have got your own server and if you have got, you know, place to host these models. The whole idea of this is like, apart from the open AMS currently happening, you should never build a successful, even before it becomes successful, should never build a solution only relying on one API provider, like just being the wrapper, because a lot of things can happen. Like for example, your prompts could be optimized for OpenAI, but suddenly OpenAI goes down. You cannot like immediately fall back with another service provider. There are a lot of these kind of nuances that are available. So it's always good to have this backup in mind. And like I said, you don't have to always spend that money with GPT-4, GPT-4 Turbo or something. You can always try with solutions that are much cheaper in APA cost. Definitely compare the cost, compare the speed, compare the quality, and then make a decision if you want to use only open source solution, if you want to use only GPT kind of paid solutions, or you want to have like a tiered approach, like I said, okay, I'll have the first layer, first level that is free, uh, not necessarily free, like open solution that has like own hosting charges the second solution uh, that is closed. The good thing with the open solution is as much as the innovation happens, you get to immediately update it. Like you can, you can go on and update it with the closed solution. You have to wait, for example, Cloud or Cohere or OpenAI, you have to wait for them to give you something in return. And then you have to then, you know, use it. Uh, you have to wait for their update. But on the flip side, the advantage is they take care of the security part. They can take care of all the other things that you usually do not have to care about. And in the open world, you have to care about all those things. So it's always a trade off. It's always good to have options. And that's why I made this video. Let me know in the comment section. What do you feel about it? If you find it useful, please share it with your friends. See you in another video. Happy prompting. Peace.